you all know about it like you know uh, internet is basically you, you know it uses tcp ip protocol right so in a client server technology right the client sends the request to the server the server if it has the data it processes it otherwise it looks for uh, the data required data in the database and responds back to the client uh, sorry server and server will perform the necessary information and respond back to the client this is the client server technology okay is so a question for you right what can you give me a practical example of a client server technology a one printer can be connected to many computers this printer server will uh, print from all the computers when requested for <coughs> now if you look at a web technology if you look at a web technology client sends the request to the server and uh, like you know on the internet server processes it and responds back to the client now if you look at a web technology example that is amazon.com any shopping website or anywhere like you know banking application anything is a web technology now if you look at like you know uh, the internet server basically you have a client over here browser then you have internet from there it connects to the server and responds back now uh, again the same thing in a different way right from the browser the client gets request to the server it processes it and response server is response back to the browser now let's look at the different kind of a servers we have right so there are two kinds of a servers one is a web server another one is a application server a web server basically what it does is it takes the request routes the request to the particular program right it's like you know uh, you go to an office uh, they, you will find a receptionist and uh, he or she will uh, like you know route to you means guide you to the correct person right that's all web server is like a receptionist application server is basically it does much more than that it's a an application server is web server plus some more facilities like load balancing that is if I have a huge amount of requests like you know some 10,000 a million requests are coming out uh, for a web server for a website then if you use only one system it will be like you know um, it will be difficult to manage because the performance will go down. One million uh, requests at the same time, the performance of the system will definitely go down. In that case, what you have to do is you have to distribute okay, the application into so many things, okay, so many machines that will balance it. Like, you know, maybe ten, first 10 requests in one system, second 10 requests in the second system. Certain requests like that. It it uses round robin technique to assign. <coughs> then so there is something called connection pooling. Okay, connection pooling is basically you have ten resources. Somebody requests for it. One resource is given. The resource pool will have nine resources. If somebody else are asked for it, one more resource is given. Eight resources are left over in the resource pool. Then uh, like you know somebody is done with the job, they will return it back to you. Like you know it. Then it will be <coughs> nine resources will be left over. Now you have <coughs> one more resource; they will uh, give it back. So, like you know, it will become ten resources. It's a basically bank kind of resource pool is like a bank. So you deposit and withdraw, deposit and withdraw. That's all is the concept of <coughs> connection pooling. <coughs> there is something called state management. State management is that. Uh, uh, state management is it will store the state of the user right for example if you are uh, like you know using using the shopping cart basically there is something like you know <clears throat> uh, whatever the selection you make it you sh it should store <coughs> on the shopping cart right so otherwise uh, like you know uh, it'll be difficult right now <clears throat> there are some more technologies are provided by the 
application server that is EJB Enterprise Java Beans is those uh, technology and another technology JMS Java Messaging Service which is not possible in um, web server it is only possible in an application server okay so these are the major differences between the web server and application server some of the examples of the web server is IIS Internet Information Service and Apache Tomcat right then in uh, like <coughs> application server you have so many JBoss is there Glassfish is there right WebLogic WebSphere Web logic, web sphere, so many things are there. So the major difference between the web server and application server is okay. Apache Tomcat is a web server. Okay, so Apache Tomcat, what it what it will do, uh, like you know, it will keep on listening for the incoming request. Whenever there is a request, then it will route to the corresponding program. Application server, little beyond that, all the three facilities it provides. Okay, now what is HTTP? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Okay, and it is on port 80. It's a TCP IP protocol on port 80 is HTTP. Now, couple of methods of HTTP. You don't, you'll not be using all, but you'll be using only two: get and post. Okay, you have get, head, post, delete, put, trace, connect. So many. So like you know, uh, get is, uh, I'll tell you, what is the difference between get and post. So just look at this slide please for 30 seconds. Uh, now uh, the difference between get and post is that get, okay, is a, a display part of URL. Now if you look at, like you know, uh, I'll just give you. Okay, if I type this, let's say, um, let's say char. So, as part of uh, like you know, uh, Google.com, you will find as part of the URL, you will find what is typed. Okay, see here, you can see what is typed. That is, a, it is going as a get request. Post will send the data or a parameter as part of the request body. See what happens is, okay. First, the URL will go, then header will go, then data will go. <coughs> okay, so uh, header will have like you know um, what is a browser, when you have sent, which protocol it is using, all the header information about the browser and client. IP address of the machine and all those things will go as a part of the header. Data is like you know whatever you send the data from the post method so there are another ways as the data can be sent as part of like you know uh, as part of the URL itself see here the data is going as part of the URL itself <laughs> so that is the uh, get if you don't it doesn't go on as part of the URL then it is post okay get is used to send the text information Port, uh, post is yeah text only so uh, you cannot send the binary information over here that is for get. The post you can send the binary information that is binary large objects. Okay. So there is something called do get do post available in servlets. We will look at those things. <coughs> okay. Then uh, you are, do get is definitely less secure than uh, <coughs> um, this one. Why? Because uh, uh, see the, whatever the data you're sending to the uh, server, it is clearly seen, right? Hacking becomes easy. It is definitely less secure, right? Whereas the put is not, uh, like, you know, uh, it is more secure. Basically, you are logging in one application, okay? Um, a web, like banking application, you're providing your user ID and password, correct? So in that case, what you do is, um, um, user ID password so it will definitely go as a post method because uh, <coughs> it is easy right it, it is like you know it is more secured it is not your user ID password will not be seen as part of the URL right definitely post is much uh, secured <coughs> okay 
So, uh, okay, next is get URL can be stored in the browser history. So, the thing is, if you look at this, like, you know, whatever this, if you go to history, like, you know, browser history, so if you go to history, you'll be able to see this website, okay? So, the get will be part of the <coughs> history, post will not be part of the browser history. <coughs> that means what data it is going, you will not be seen as part of the browser history. Right, so uh, that is what the get and post differences. Like client data needs to be sent to the server, and it is not a huge amount of data. Go for get, and wherever internet, like you know, I'll, there is a question for you actually. Let me see. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, now, <coughs> can you think of one practical scenario where get and post is required? Okay, you just look at post is required like you know when you are entering sending the confidential data because your user ID password will not be seen as part of the URL, okay, and uh, <coughs> so basically uh, <coughs> for logging information like user ID password those things for Gmail we can send it using um, post and uh, get is used in all other cases. Right, wherever you want to send the data, okay, you can send the data. Okay.